wanna give you a solution. But right now, today, that time is up. There's no more I'm giving you lies. We're not African. We're not black. We're not Jamaican. We're all from the 12 times. To give a warning. We're not judging you, we're ready. Well, have we seen any change? No. Have we seen anything that has changed our people? Changed our neighborhood? Hey, bro, what's your name? Shan? Shan? Good to meet you, Shan. My name is Judah. Oh, no, no, no. Let me ask you something, brother Shan. That's cool. You cool right there. Let me ask you something. What's today? Today is. Today's Saturday, right? That's what we've been taught. Today is just another Saturday, another weekend for us to kick it and chill, right? But here's what God says today is. Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So let me ask you something. You ever heard this? You ever heard this, read this scripture before? So when you read it, what day was it talking about that the Sabbath was? What day of the week? That's, that's what I'm asking you. What were you taught that the Sabbath day was? That's what I'm asking you. Because I'm going to show you. Because when, when you say what you understand because what you were brought up learning, that's the same thing we all were brought up learning. Because we all basically come from the same communities. No matter where you go in America, we pretty much have the same kind of backgrounds. Right? Because we all grow up pretty much in the same kind of neighborhoods, just different cities. Right? So what you were taught about the Bible and about the Sabbath day, what day were you taught that the Sabbath day was? Or the day to worship God, what, what day was that? Uh, Sunday. Sunday, right? So now, what day of the week is Sunday? What day of the week is Sunday? What day of the week is Sunday, sis? The first day of the week. The first day of the week, right? So read that again. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse eight. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. So six days we got to work and do everything that we got to do for our families, for ourselves, right? Come on. But the seventh day. What day? But the seventh day. So if Sunday is the first day of the week, what's the seventh day of the week? Saturday. So Saturday is the Sabbath day today, right? So it says we got six days to do every, even this, what we're doing today. We got six days to do all of this. Right. Whether it be cooking, because you see brothers out here barbecuing, selling their barbecue, whether it be marching and having a parade and having a good time for, for our people, right. for ourselves, we got six days to do that. God says he just needs one. Just one day. Come on, read on. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. You ever go to some places on a Sunday and you try to go to a store, you try to go get something to eat and the whole town is shut down? That's exactly what the Bible is saying. Ain't nothing supposed to be moving on a Sabbath day. Right. Nothing's supposed to be moving because that's the God, that's God, the creator of all things. That's his day. That's all he asking. One day out of the week. Give me Exodus chapter 31 and verse uh, 14. Start from verse 14. The book of Exodus chapter 31 verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is a holy unto you. Every Start from verse 13. Because the point is, who are, we, who are we out here for? We out here for our people. Check this out. Brother Shan, you see yourself on this sign? You see yourself on that sign? These on the right hand side is the nationalities that have been given to us over time. The Bible says this is who we are. Benjamin, 
Oh, oh, Levi, the tribe of Levi, so-called Haitian. So again, what we're trying to show our people is that these 12 tribes, these so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, is who the Bible is talking about keeping the Sabbath day holy. This day today, all you see out here are Israelites. All these blacks, all these Hispanics and Native Americans, that's who you see are Israelites. Because not all of them are black. Some of them are Native Americans, they probably don't even know it. Some of them are black, and they call themselves Navajo or Cherokee or whatever, but they don't realize that God says that they are Israel. That they are the Israelites, his chosen people. Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 31, verse 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel. That's the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Speak unto the children of Israel. Read. Say, verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation. So the sign that God has made between us and him is to keep the Sabbath day. That's to show that we are in lockstep and we are in full concordance with what God is doing. So when God says, listen, if you are oppressed people, I'll relieve you from that oppression. How? You gotta be keeping my commandments. You gotta be keeping my Sabbath day. I ain't gonna break that promise as long as you don't break that promise, right? So here's the thing though, as a nation, individually we can say we could do it, but that would be selfish on our part because even what you do affects the next person around you. That's what we've never understood as long as we've been going to church and learning about this Bible. Everything that we do affects the next person, next person next to us. Whether it be old to young, young to old, everything that we do affects the next person. So what we have to realize is we are a unit. We are a people, one people, one nation. So I can't just be like, you know what, I'm saved, I'm good. I don't know about you, you know, you gotta work out your own salvation. No, what I'm saying, that's why we're out here today. To show our people the only salvation we're going to get is we come together as one people. One mindset. Keeping God's commandments, keeping God's laws. Check this out, Shan. Read verse, uh, four, uh, verse 15. Verse 15. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord. Whosoever done any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. So that's what Moses is telling the Israelites at this time. If you break God's commandments of keeping the Sabbath, you're going to be put to death. Right. Now today, the only reason why we're not slaughtered and killed and put, put to death today is because of the mercy that Christ gave us. Hold up that sign right there. Because this is what we've been taught, right? Bring it up. We've been taught that this is Jesus Christ. But when you read the Bible, the Bible doesn't say that Christ looks anything like that. It has his description in the Bible. But we've been going off of this because of what we've seen on the movies, what we've seen on TV, and what's been portrayed. If you Google right now, Jesus Christ, what's the first thing that comes up? That picture right there. But when you read the scriptures, hold up, hold up, hold up the, the true Messiah, my man. Hold up the true Messiah. When you read the scriptures, you see it right there. It says that his... That his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brown. It's brass. It's a color. It's a derivative of brown. But let's see how brown it was. It says as it says as if they burned in a furnace. Right. You know, people. You you could look around and you could see some people are so dark. You think that they've been burned by the sun, burned in the furnace. That's what they're saying. That's what the Bible says Christ looks like. Christ looks like you. Christ looks like your father. Christ looks like a lot of the people that are out here calling themselves African Americans, calling themselves Asians. The Bible says they are Israelites. Christ is from the tribe of Judah. If you're a so-called African American out here, you are from the tribe of Judah. If you're a so-called Haitian, you're from the tribe of Levi. If you're from the West Indies, you'll be from the tribe of Benjamin. If you're, West, if you're from uh, Puerto Rico, you'll be from the tribe of Ephraim. That's what the Bible is trying to show our people, their true heritage and their true nationality. But we've never been taught that in the church, as long as we've been going to church. So God says this about those people. Read it again. Verse 15. Six days may work be done. You can work for six days. Do everything you got to do for six days. Do what you got to do. You got six days to do it. Whether it be work, get all your food, party, whatever you want to do it. Do it in the six days that God give you to do it. But on the seventh day, read that. But in the seventh, if the Sabbath of rest, 
holy through the Lord. When it says holy, that means it's separate to the Lord. That means whatever you want to do, you ain't doing it that day because that's the day you dedicate to the Most High. Right. That's today. That's not what we're doing today. Today, yeah, we're, we might be honoring Martin Luther King, but we're still not honoring God. Because right. the way we honor God is by keeping his commandments. Right. You understand? And even Martin Luther King, if he were to be here, he would want us to honor God's commandments and honor God. More so than just honoring him. Him as a man, he was a humble person. So he wouldn't want people to make parades for him. He would want them to make parades to God. So come on, read on. Whosoever do any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. So it says throughout their generations. That means if you have a son, he keeps the commandments of the Sabbath. If his son is born, he keeps the commandments. And all the families that come from that lineage, that comes from you, they're supposed to keep the commandments all the way back up to your ancestors. But we didn't do that. And the reason why we didn't do that is why we were brought on slave ships to Haiti, to the West Indies, to America, for breaking these commandments. So that's why even today we still suffer. We in the, in the slums and the ghettos. We keep asking ourselves, okay, every year we do this, how come we can't get better as a nation? How come we can't clean up our neighborhoods? Or how come we can't decrease or eliminate the black on black crime or the drug violence or the gang violence in our neighborhoods? Even after doing this every single year for the last 25 years. How come we can't change that? The, the very theme of this particular year is where do we go from here? So that's my question to even you or even to the people out here. Where do we go from here? What happens after today? Do we still go back to just saying, all right, cool, I'm going to just go to the Sunday church. I'm going to just continue keep eat, uh, eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. I'm going to continue uh, jumping from woman to woman, jumping from man to man. I'm going to keep doing whatever I want to do. Yeah, rolling up joints in front of the corner store. I'm going to continue do, doing what I want to do. Right. After today, where do we go from here? Do we keep doing those things that got to keep us at the bottom of society? Change. We have to what? Change. We have to what? Change. We have to what? Change. That's the truth. That's the right. truth is we have to change. Right. The only way we're going to change is by keeping God's commandments. Give me Psalms 19:7. Bring it the only way we're going to change is by the commandments that come out of this Bible. Right. Every one of us that you see here, at one point, we were out here. We were out here looking at the women, out here smoking weed. We were out here chilling too. But we understood that there's something more to the life that we was living. Right. So now we have to start asking ourselves, okay, so what is it? Where do we go from here? Now we started looking at these commandments. We started seeing that our ancestors are actually these people that are written about in the Bible. Right. Moses is your ancestor. Right. The, the, uh, Aaron, the priest, that is your ancestor. Right. That comes, you come from that, that, that direct lineage. Jesus Christ is your ancestor. That's right. why it matters who you are. That's why it matters what nationality you are. That's right. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. What, what, what have you ever heard prior to what we just read? What in this world is perfect? We'll wait. What in, I, I ask anybody under the sound of my voice. What in this world is perfect? What can make you perfect? Is it putting blonde hair in your head? Is it wearing tight pants? Is it is it smoking weed, rolling up joints? Is it is it having a bunch of women or a bunch of men? What is it that makes you perfect? Staying and following God's commandments is absolutely true. But here's the thing though. You say one thing that's so important that our people hate to hear change. Because our people don't want to change. As much, as much things that happen to our people, our young sons getting shot down in the streets, whether it be by police or by their own people or by their own friends, whether they getting killed in the street, the change doesn't matter. Because once they're dead and in the ground, so is their memory. Because they just keep on doing what they've been doing. Nothing changes. 
Here's the only thing that's going to change us. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord, the law of the Lord is perfect. The Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect. Come on. Converting the soul. What does convert mean? You said it already. But, but you said it with one word already. Change. So what does the law do? Read it again. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. Changing the soul. So if you were the type of brother that you came out here specifically to get in every single one of these sisters' panties as, as quickly as you possibly could, when you start keeping God's commandments, that is over. Right. Now you've changed to the type of person where you understand that marriage is honorable right. and the bed undefiled. So you keep that one wife for as long as you live or until Christ come, whatever comes first. But you understand that because God's laws says that. God's laws determine now the way you live. Now they will see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are Israelites. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.